G'day and welcome to Mr. Code's Steam Podcast. Would you still like to use your old EV3 motors and sensors with the new Spike Prime hub? Well, this quick, easy adapter may just be what you're looking for. Let's test and review this new adapter. The EV3 is arguably LEGO's most successful robotic system, and a lot of people are still shocked by the product line's retirement. I for one really like the new Spike Prime system, but I can understand the difficulties that many educators are facing in this transition period between EV3 and Spike Prime. I mean, do you uh, hold on to your old EV3 systems for as long as possible, or do you replace your hardware with a new Spike Prime system? Well, this quick easy adapter aims to solve this by making the old EV3 hardware compatible with the Spike Prime hub and also the Spike Prime software. However, this latest version of Quick Easy aims to expand even further by providing the Spike Prime with virtual wireless sensor technology to allow your robot to be controlled by a computer, a microprocessor, or a Amazon Alexa completely wirelessly. Now, I spent a lot of time making robotics videos, so if you find any of it interesting, then please consider liking and subscribing to my channel. It is your support that lets me continue making technology videos, so I thank you in advance. Let's dive in. So here I have my Lego Spike Prime Hub. This is using version 2 and uh, this is the quick easy adapter. Alright, so here we have some instructions and also our adapter. Let's see how quick and how easy this really is, okay? So here I have now got my adapter unwrapped. Just going to plug it into port A of my spike hub. You can see that the light is already flashing on my adapter. Uh, and then I'm going to plug in a EV3 motor. Okay, here it is. EV3 motor plugged in. And here's my adapter. All right, I think that blue light means that it is happening. Let's have a try. It's great. It's working really well so far. See if I can reverse the direction. Good. Right, let's do some programming. Going to head into Spike Prime. Of course, we are using the uh, legacy app because we're on version 2. Let's try these word blocks. One rotation. Good. All right, I'm just going to double check to make sure that this rotation is accurate. All right, right on the end there for one rotation. Yeah, it looks like it's over. Um, moving over just a tiny bit. Let's try it again. Yeah, it looks like it moves more than one rotation, just very slightly. I wonder if it's a speed thing. So if I go back into... So if I go back into my software and I change up the speed... Make it move really slowly and then see if that makes it more accurate. Yeah, 
yeah, it's definitely more accurate. So it looks like the momentum is carrying the motor uh, further than the um, the desired number of rotations. I mean, which is to be expected, but um, yeah, it would have been nice to make it so that it is a bit more accurate at high speed, but that's okay. Let's see what else we can do here. Now, one thing I want to know is how shortest path is going to work because on EV3, uh, there is no shortest path command. So is it going to um, make it move to a fixed position or is it just like not going to work? So let's test that out. Shortest path to zero. Um, and as you know, there is no absolute positioning on these EV3 motors. So let's see what happens. Okay, so that's moving to zero. Um, let's see if it does that consistently. Huh, that's pretty cool. Let's see if um, I can move the speed up a little bit. So I'm going to go back into my spike software. I'm going to change my speed to um, 100 and see if it goes back to that fixed position. Yeah, so it goes over just slightly. All right interesting stuff so the motor seems to be working really well and it would serve you really well if you were using um, this motor for uh, your standard robot yeah uh, I'm not a big fan of the EV3 motors shape because it is like pretty awkward it's like this banana shape but um, yeah if you still have a bunch of EV3 motors and you want to use them with spike prime then you can do that um, one kind of big complaint I have with this um, quick easy adapter is that each adapter only fits one machine if that makes sense it's only like one adapter per peripheral so if I had a robot that had four motors I'm going to need four of these adapters hmm would be nice if we can have like one adapter that connects to everything right so that you can uh, attach multiple adapters, I mean uh, multiple peripherals onto the one. But I guess that's asking too much. Let's test out the medium motor. Yep, it's working well. About the other direction. Yep, it's fine. Let's have a look at the code. Ah, this is interesting. So it looks like for the medium motor, the clockwise rotation goes for goes anti-clockwise. If I change it to anti-clockwise in spike, so here it's now anti-clockwise. Is that going to go clockwise now? Yeah, it looks like anti-clockwise and clockwise are reversed for the medium motor. Interesting. So it just means that you'll have to uh, adapt your coding to, to match it. I'm not sure if it's something that uh, QuickEasy is going to fix, but something to keep in mind. Now let's test out a sensor for QuickEasy. Let's uh, remove this motor. Let's start with a... EV3 touch sensor. So the equivalent of a touch sensor in Spike is the um, is the force sensor, right? So if you have a look at the software, uh, that's what it does. So in Spike, it recognizes the device as a force sensor over here, and uh, if I touch the button, it it does show a discrete value, so 10 newtons. So there is no in-between value, obviously, because the EV3 sensor is, um, is a discrete on and off, 
rather than the uh, um, continuous reading from Spike. Let's change it out again to a, a distance sensor. All right, so we've changed it to a distance sensor. It's li lighting up, which is cool. If you go into the software, um, it, it also shows that it is a um, an ultrasonic sensor or a distance sensor, right? So, sorry, it's called the ultrasonic sensor in EV3. It's called the distance sensor in Spike. Cool, so here we are detecting all sorts of ranges. Uh, I'm just going to put my hand in front of it. Yeah, 32 centimeters. It detects it all the way out to 40s and then 50s, 60s, and then over a meter. And it's very responsive as well, which is really good. Now the color sensor. Okay, color sensor is on and also uh, it's lighting up. So interestingly, I'm going to show a yellow block onto it and it shows yellow and red for some reason. Let's try red. So it's showing um, this purple and red. Let's make it so that when the color is red, we make a beep. Uh, you see how there's, even though there's nothing on the um, sensor, it's making some beeps. I think it's because um, it's detecting the ambient colors. Uh, this does, definitely doesn't happen in EV3. So I guess that there is still some some patching that might need to be done for For the color sensor. It definitely works better. I mean it definitely detects better when the block is put in front of it, but it's also taking a lot of these anomalous readings as well. All right let's do the final test which is the gyro. So not sure if the gyro is actually going to work because the um, spike has a built-in gyro and it's six axis Whereas in EV3, this gyro only detects one rotation value. So what is it going to actually detect over here? Nope, the your pitch and roll is uh, just measuring the, um, the hubs. So uh, I guess the gyro sensor is the only one that doesn't really work with quick easy, which I guess is okay because when you have the spike prime hub, then the spike prime hub is going to be your gyro anyway. Uh, it would have been nice to have an external gyro. After testing out the latest Quick Easy adapter, I think it is a viable solution for using your EV3 hardware in Spike Prime. Now there are definitely some limitations in terms of the color sensor and also the gyro sensor. But other than that, uh, the adapter does what it sets out to do. What I haven't fully tested is the virtual wireless sensor mode, which to me is more of a bonus feature than a core function of the adapter. And when I tried to get it working, the process was no longer quick or easy. It definitely requires some more expertise and time uh, to get running. Maybe I will make another video dedicated to the virtual wireless sensor mode in another time. If your child or school is interested in learning more about robotics, then why not pop into our Eastwood or Chatswood Robotics Center? We have robotics classes for all ages and skill levels, and we collaborate extensively with schools around Sydney. Visit www.creatoracademy.au you to learn more. That's it from me today. What would you like to see more from a future quick easy video? Let me know in the comment section below. I'll see you later. Bye bye.